Easter's in full bloom at Whole Foods Market with great deals on spiral cut bone in ham and leg of lamb, both crowd pleasers. Round out your spread with quiche, deviled eggs, and delicious catering platters from prepared foods. Oh, and remember to pick up a Whole Foods Market bunny cake from the bakery. Strap for time? They cater too, with delicious options available without the effort. Find hundreds of Easter deals and delights now at Whole Foods Market. Today on CityCast Philly, there's an ongoing debate here in the city. Who makes the best cheesesteaks? I'm going on a cheesesteak quest in our area to find out. But first, I'm talking with two food experts about what makes an excellent cheesesteak and what I need to look out for when ranking them. It's Thursday, March 21st. I'm Trina Nuri, and here's what Philly's talking about. Joining me is CityCast Philly food contributor Dave Wes. Hey, Dave. What's going on? And Carolyn Wyman, author of The Great Philly Cheesesteak Book. Hey. Okay, I need both of you to help me go on this cheesesteak journey. I'm embarking on a serious food hunt. (laughs) So... There are so many spots in the city to get a cheesesteak. But for the purposes of this episode, can you tell me the first place you would recommend I go to to get a Philly cheesesteak? I think the first place is the first place, which is Pat's. Okay, Carolyn, you say Pat's that's down in South Philly. And it's across from another iconic spot, Gino's. We'll talk about that later. I'm not saying it's the best. But I'm saying that that's where it all started. And so you have to bow your knee to the creator, I think. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Bend the knee. Okay, (laughs) okay. Dave, (laughs) what's your choice? John's Rose Pork is solid. Uh, It's it's my first favorite cheesesteak I've ever had. It's right near like the uh, where the Ikea is and the Lowe's down there in South Philly, like off Columbus Boulevard, I guess you would say. You both agree that South Philly is the first place I should go to on my journey. Yes. I would agree with that. Well, I mean, because it it's an Italian sandwich. I mean, it was created by an Italian. So yeah, then that's where most of the Italians settled here. So that all makes sense. And that's where probably many of the, not all, but many good places who make cheesesteaks are. I would agree with that. I'm making a huge assumption that everyone knows what we're talking about when we say Philly cheesesteak. But for those who are not aware, what are the basic elements of a Philly cheesesteak? Sure. Yeah. Bread, uh, Italian roll, basically. Meat, thin sliced, usually ribeye, sometimes top round, sometimes less, less good than that. Uh, cheese could be usually melted on the grill and then, uh, onions, grilled onions. I would say you got a good bread, good meat and cheese. So let me ask you guys this in, you know, a course of a month, how many cheesesteaks do you eat? Do you want to go first, Carolyn? <laughs> you can't count how huh? you're, you're adding them up. Um, I don't eat that many in a month, I would say. At this point, certainly when I was writing my book, I ate an enormous amount. But uh, it's kind of a treat. And not to mention, you know, I'm sort of a small person. And these are huge sandwiches. Right, so you don't want to lose your figure. We're talking, (laughs) yeah, 10, 12 inches at least, uh, which is bizarre. I mean, I think that's a Philly thing, you know? It's like uh, big. We do it big here, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's what I, I talked to my team about this. I was wondering, I was like, this is going to be a lot of food. Can I split this with someone? Can yes. someone eat yes. half and I'll eat half? You, you know? definitely so, yeah. can. And in fact, when I was doing my book, I mean, I did interviews and I would take the sandwich to go. And then I right. would... He started in the car. And if it was good, I would put it in my little cooler. And if it wasn't good, well, you can imagine what happened. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, how many cheesesteaks do you eat in a month? Uh, I would say I would probably I probably have one at least once a week. 
But if my cardiologist is listening once a month. <laughs> <laughs> right, because it's a bunch of red meat. It's red meat. It's high cholesterol, cheese, mm -hmm. carbs. It's It's all the things your cardiologist says to stay away from, but they're so damn delicious. It's, right. it's a treat. It's a treat. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to have it every day. I mean, I think this was sandwich was invented in 1930. So we eat a little differently now, but to me, for me, it's more of a treat. I really look forward to it when I have one. All right. So over the next few months, because it's going to take me some months, I'm going to try cheesesteaks from different places and I want to rank them. And so along the way, I'm going to share what I learned with our CityCast Philly audience. So I want to hear from you, our experts, about what's your approach to rating if a Philly cheesesteak is good or not? What should I look out for? I mean, one thing, just on a historic note, when you when you approach a place, okay, I don't know if you're going to mm -hmm. go freelance and just do you not take our recommendations, but if you're going to go freelance. No, I am. I am going to listen. I'm listening. <laughs> then you need to look at the name, okay? If they're advertising, mm -hmm. this is John's Cheesesteaks place, okay? Or if it says cheesesteaks in the window, think about going somewhere else. Ooh, that's a take. One thing is it probably doesn't have a lot of history because it started, it was a steak sandwich, not a not a cheese steak, okay? So most of the older stands and the established stands and the people that know what they're doing, they're called steaks. And and yeah, you can get cheese and that gets into the whole how do you order thing. But in terms of when you're actually eating the sandwich, I mean, the it should have a fresh roll that is not too flabby, not too soft, has a little bit of integrity to hold up to the juices. It should have great meat that is thin sliced. It should not taste like hamburger. It shouldn't have the consistency of hamburger. It shouldn't be tough. It shouldn't be chewy. It shouldn't have a lot of gristle. Uh, it should have cheese, but it shouldn't dominate. Now, a lot of, there's a trend nowadays. A lot of people order provolone on their cheesesteaks. I have a real issue with, no, 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 no. Do not do that. That no. is not good. No. Why? Why? The provolone has too strong a flavor, okay? A, a cheesesteak mm. is a bland sandwich. I'm not, that's not a put down. It's it's accessible to everyone. But if you, each of those ingredients, the cheese, and then we haven't gotten to the onions yet, which should be, you know, cooked. But basically those four ingredients should be in balance. They should, one should not pop out to you because then it's, then it's something else, you know, then it's like, oh, this is a great roll or this is wonderful cheese. No, you should say this is a wonderful cheese steak. OK. Yeah. All right. I have a little right, bit so of an opinion on that. Obviously. Yeah, no, it's cool. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> so let's break this down a little bit. Let's start with the bun, the bread. That's very important. It's got to be an Italian roll, seeded. Uh, it's got to have a structure to it, kind of like what Carolyn was saying, where it needs to be strong enough to hold the sandwich. Is it toasted? It can be toasted. Uh, I would say the majority of the cheesesteaks I eat are not toasted. Their bread just already has the integrity of like a crusty outside, soft inside, and something to keep an eye out for when you order. If you see them gutting the roll, like grabbing some of the bread out, mm -hmm. you know you're in for a big sandwich because they are removing the bread so they're able to fit that meat, cheese, and onion mixture in it. So you'll see sometimes with some cheesesteak shops or pizza shops, when they skimp or they're not, not making a big cheesesteak, they'll leave the bread in there. But if you see them start gutting the roll, you automatically know like you're about to get a really big cheesesteak. Gotcha. Carolyn, did you want to add anything about the bread? One thing uh, when I was working on my book, you know, like uh, people were saying, well, how come we can't get as good a cheesesteak, you know, outside of Philly? And one of the reasons is the roll, because yeah. other places they're trying to get an Italian roll. And so they were getting deliveries or able to get fresh rolls like every other day or every third day. But here in Philly, we have so many great sandwiches on those rolls that they're incredibly fresh. 
Also, the great thing is, is that there's so many opinions about what the rolls should be like, or there's different stands that have different amounts of onion that they put in or different amounts of cheese. And so they need a different roll. Like I was saying, if it's a really juicy, greasy sandwich, you need a really tough roll to kind of hold up to that. Maybe Karanji's, a place like that, which has a very, they call them almost like a gum bleeder, very tough outside. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> but, but then you got Amoroso's on the other end, which is pretty soft in and out. I love Amoroso's. And then you've got like Lissio's, which is kind of in, in the middle, which is what I like usually for your standard cheesesteak. And a lot of stands do use that that bakery. Dave, before we move on, do you have a recommendation for a spot that has really good bread for their cheesesteaks? Angelo's Pizzeria in South Philly. Danny makes his own bread every morning. So this is one of the few people that are waking up at the butt crack of dawn, getting in there and cooking and baking his own bread. Not many other places can say that. I, I always joke around. I have two favorites, but they're like two sons. Like you don't love one more than the other. Uh, John's is my first love. John's roast pork. And then Angelo's. Because I, I discovered John's first. So that's like my firstborn. And then Angelo's is like my second born. <laughs> okay. Like y'all mentioned, a Philly cheesesteak wouldn't be what it is without the meat. How do you evaluate the meat in your cheesesteak? So first off, when I go to any cheesesteak place, one of the things I, I take notice first right off the bat, is it made to order? Is there, if you go into a cheesesteak place and there's a big mound of meat, I'm just like, ugh. Because like, you, you don't know okay. at what point of the day is what part of that mound being cooked and what part you're getting. Do you think there's a reason why they put a pile of meat and have it sitting on the grill? It's got to be because of like production reasons, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, I would say the more popular places like the Pats, Gino's, uh, Della Sandro's, they all have piles of meat. And it's because they have a long line. I get it. I understand. But as far as the quality thing... If I'm going to spend money on a cheesesteak, I'm going to go to a place that uh, is made to order. Carolyn, what's your approach to the meat of a cheesesteak? One thing to do is look around the shop. See if you see a slicer. If you see a slicer or even them slicing the, the ribeye, whoa, you, you, you probably got ribeye and it's probably people that are pretty serious about making a good cheesesteak. There are, you know, a surprising number of shops that do that. So not just the, something frozen, you know, that's hitting the grill frozen. I'm not saying it can't be a good cheesesteak if they do that. But, you know, just give extra points to the guy that's doing it fresh. More on how to select the best cheesesteak and more recommendations after the break. This is CityCast Philly. All right, let's get back into this. From your perspective and your experiences, are there places that are overrated? Yes, 100%. I would say the most overrated cheesesteak in all the land is Della Sandra's. Uh, I'm not a fan. Uh, and I'm, pre I'm pretty vocal about it, too. I think it's minced meat. It's not made to order. There's always a long line. That's that's my opinion. Hmm, interesting. Well, we got a difference of opinion here because it's it's let's a, hear it. It's chop style, okay? There's two two styles of cheesesteak, and some people like the slab style, like the they don't want it, it does the steak to be chopped up much or if at all. And I respect that, and I think it is harder to produce a you know tender cheesesteak when it is a slab. You know, it's impressive when somebody can do that. But I like the, the chop style also. I mean, I, I don't really have a preference, um, but I do like D'Alessandro's, I got to tell you. I think because the cheesesteak is sort of a simple sandwich, in your search, you're going to find out whether you like slab or or chop style or wait, maybe you're like me and you're kind of, will do anything. Hold on. So Carolyn, you never told us what's the most overhyped cheesesteak in your opinion. Well, well, I think she says she said any place that has the name cheesesteak in the window. 
don't go to that one. <laughs> That's something I'm learning. <laughs> well, it's kind of it's it's appealing to the tourists, really. You know, and yeah. and it doesn't probably have much history because it because those those early places, Pats and Geno's and you know John's and a lot of these places was started when. It didn't even have cheese on it. Nobody had cheese till like, or nobody was was selling them with cheese until like the fifties, early. 50s. Well, how did they make that original sandwich? It just was a steak sandwich. So just have the onions, but but no cheese. Interesting. There was a guy who worked at Pat's named Joe Lorenzo who put the cheese on himself one day just because he was bored with, you know, just the steak sandwiches. Yeah, so. Innovation happens. Now you got on me about my choice to put provolone on my cheese steaks. Let's talk about cheese. Which types of cheese should I choose? Well, if you're going to a bunch of stands, I think you've got to you got to pick one and go with it. I think to be fair, right? You shouldn't be ordering provolone at one and American at another and Whiz at another unless you have no option. I, I mean, agree. You need to set your control. I order mine with uh, American and with fried onions or grilled onions. So if you do that, I would suggest on your cheesesteak journey to know what your order is going to be throughout the journey so you can make a fair assessment on everything. So if you're going to do provolone, do a provolone for everybody. But you might run into a problem where some places might not offer provolone, but I can promise you they either carry American or some type of American and or whiz. Yeah, I mean, you could run into trouble with if you do whiz, too, because there are a few stands that are like, that's below our standards for food, you know, even though it's not below my standards for food. But but I prefer <laughs> <Same>. American. <laughs> like, like Dave, I prefer American. I think it, it blends so nicely. You get that gooiness. Yep. Um, and, and then recently, I guess I would really say in the last four or five years, You've really seen the emergence of Cooper Sharp American cheese. It's a regional brand and it's a type of American cheese. It it melts really nice. I never grew up on Cooper Sharp. I grew up on Land of Lakes and Clearfields American or whatever was on sale at Acme. So I only really started eating Cooper since I've been in Philadelphia, to be honest with you. This is so interesting to me because all my life I've been so far, I've been eating provolone, but this is like mind blown okay <laughs> i just didn't know i had choices it's kind of a, a, i mean the provolone thing really is a recent thing you know and i attribute it kind okay. of the gourmetization of everything you know but i i don't think uh the, the philly cheesesteak is a gourmet sandwich and it's not appropriate you know not everything has to be fancy it could be just good i like that now we have to talk about these toppings yes What are we ordering as a topping? This is a heated debate. You can get you can get yourself in a pickle. uh, No, no pun pun intended. (laughs) (laughs) Depending on like if you what you order at some places or even in the discussion, I would say that fried onions or grilled onions. Like I love onions, so that's how I order it. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think it's a must because like there's so many people that don't like onions, but me personally. I, I order mine with onions every time. I'm getting mine with onions for sure. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a must, frankly. I mean, I think right, that's an essential part of the taste. Um, well, Carolyn, I got to ask you, if you could only have one, either American cheese or fried onions, oh, which one would you choose? Oh, that's, uh, that's a very hard decision. Because I think that's the taste. Onion, meat, cheese. Yeah. And the bread holds it all together. So if you take one out, it's not going to be as good. Now, the, mm-hmm. the most common misconception of people who don't live in Philly about the cheesesteak is that it comes standard with the bell pepper, right? The peppers, The yeah. green pepper. That's that's what, you know, a lot of companies, national companies may try to reproduce the taste. They'll put in that. And again, for us, it's just a, a, an optional add-on. Yeah. Okay, Carolyn and Dave, give me some names of some places I have to go on my cheesesteak crawl. I think you have to go to Phillips because Phillips is the kind of the the local alternative to Pat's and Gino's. You know, at this point, 
I mean, there's some locals that go to Santino's, but <laughs> Phillips is not a tourist trap, but it has that same, you know, original kind of format of the outdoor stand, you know, leaning on the counter and that kind of thing. And I also think you should go to Donkey's, which is a very different cheesesteak uh, on a poppy seeded Kaiser roll, but incredibly good, incredibly interesting. It's, it's an old speakeasy that a, a, a boxer bought, uh, you know, in retirement. And, and it's just like you walk in there, it's like a museum of old Camden. And I just, I mean, again, I, I really fall for that. I also think Leo's out in Folcroft is also worth it, worth a stop run by some brothers. It started, it was, it was at the, the trolley out there. It was like they were in this tiny old trolley building and then they got kicked out by SEPTA and now they're in this huge building, uh, you know, been there since at least the fifties and neighborhood places. I mean, that's a lot of what the cheesesteak is, is what's the best place in the neighborhood? And I think they are for their neighborhood. I have to ask, do you like garlic bread? I do. I love garlic bread. All right. So you need to put Lilo's tomato pies on your list. It's in Haynesport, New Jersey. They're making a an amazing cheesesteak where they toast the bread. I want to say they're a versus bread. So it's seeded. Um, and what they do is they'll put, they put garlic bread spread on it. Toast the roll, and they put 16 ounces of the ribeye, Cooper Sharp American, onions if you want it, and it's it's a solid cheesesteak. And when you bite into it, you kind of, you get the taste of the ribeye meat, the gooeyness of the cheese, the roll, the crunchiness of the toasted roll, and garlic bread. Uh, what's your feelings on that, Carolyn? Yeah, it's, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think it could taste great, but I don't know. It a, sounds a little out there. Yeah. No, I, I, I'd like to get your perspective. <laughs> but I've heard that too. Like some traditionalists are like, I don't want garlic bread. It shouldn't be garlic bread. It's just, mm. just the cheesesteak should speak for itself. But if you love garlic bread, like I do, Lilo's offers that. And then Angelo's also offers their cheesesteak on garlic bread. I think they call it the Tony head. Um, I love garlic and I love garlic bread. So a lot of times I'll order that. Hmm. Never had garlic bread cheese steaks. I, yeah, I'm I'm usually eating like a a plate of pasta yeah. with <laughs> yeah my garlic, garlic bread. bread. I think you you stopped me when you said toasted roll. I, I'm not even sure I want that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I feel you, Carolyn. I was like, <laughs> Dave, I usually trust you, but I don't know about that. It's not like toasted where it's like it falls apart. It's toasted okay. just enough where the outside is crispy, and then like the The garlic bread spread like melts into the roll real nice. All right. That was Dave West, CityCast Philly food contributor and creator of Feeding Time TV. And Carolyn Wyman, author of The Great Philly Cheesesteak Book. Thank you both so much for all your takes and recommendations. I can't wait to gas up the car and eat some cheesesteaks. Well, if you need a partner for any of those, let me know. I'll take a ride with you. I'll ride shotgun. Yes. (laughs) Thanks for having me. It's been a lot of fun. That's all for today here on CityCast Philly. Are you hungry yet? (laughs) If you enjoyed this episode about Philly cheesesteaks, tell a friend, rate the show, leave us a review, and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to sign up for our morning newsletter, Hey Philly, to learn more about what else Philly's talking about. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Bye. Bye.